I'm so sugared out. Everybody scattered. Cockroaches. That reminds me of Joe's Department. That was a fun movie. I think I might actually watch it. I haven't seen it in a while. And we are live. Okay. Hello, and welcome to Project Refit. We are the group you didn't know you needed until you found us. Project Refit was started to be a safe place for veterans and attempt to lower the veteran suicide rate of 22 per day. Uh, I, I found out yesterday that in the past week, three veterans uh, that were not part of our group, but were in our general area, all committed suicide. Uh, it was quickly opened up to first responders who are more likely to die by suicide than in the line of duty. Over 6% of first responders have attempted suicide at some point in their career. This is a place where those who are hurting can come and tell their story to others that truly understand. It sometimes gets very raw, but it is important that we allow our military and first responders to talk without judgment or restriction. We only have a few rules, no isms, racism, sexism, or discrimination. If we want others to respect us, we have to respect others and ourselves. We do try to steer clear of politics and religion, as they are sometimes triggering. Uh, when someone is telling their story, don't interrupt. It may be the first time they've been able to talk about it out loud. Uh, also, no diagnosing. Usually none of us are trained, and even if you are, this is not the time or the place to diagnose others. Uh, don't tell others what they must do. You can tell them what you did, how it worked out, but don't tell them what they should do. We do encourage therapy, just opening up and talking in the group is therapeutic. And several people who were here on Buddy Check-In have gone on to professional therapy with great results when they were ready. And warning, we will mock you. It just means you've been accepted as one of us. So there is that too. Blame Austin. All right. Blame Austin for what? Everything. What, like oh. your legs? Uh, he had a rough week. Who did? Didn't you have a problem with one of your engravings and have to? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> that was with the polishing, not the engraving. Which he said. Now I'm on to this. That's nice. Only, was it like only fans? Only homies? Homies only. <laughs> I know that what? is only homies. <laughs> That's sick, though. That is quite a talent. So is that like just one solid sheet and then you, you carved it out? Yeah, he's in uh this is like work mode. My personal how is it made where you can interact and ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I'm that. I'm that idiot. Like, I don't give a shit if I'm curious about something. I will ask you. Like, I was at Walmart, and this was in Vegas, and mind you, it's maybe the first second week of October, so you're gonna see people that work at Spirit Halloween and stuff. You know, they're in costume going to work or whatever. So I'm just setting the stage. I'm at Walmart, and I see this woman. She's she looks like a cartoony character, so I asked her. You know, I said, hey, I like your costume. And she's like, what costume? That's not a costume. <laughs> That's not a dress. So I'm like, it looks nice. I like it. Let me Welcome guess. to you Vegas. Go, let me guess. You go up to fat women and ask them, oh, when's the baby due? <laughs> no, I learned not about that one. Ran into one too many Mac. Ran into one too many Karens. No, it's worse is a buddy of mine's kid, bless her little heart. She was in line and she'd never seen a black person. 
Oh, and God. she walked, she said, can you, maybe we need to hand this person a wipe because they're dirty. I, I was like, oh, my God. Thankfully, the, the lady was, was understanding and cool about it, but that was awkward. Yeah, but that was a really yeah. good teachable moment if you had the right person. Yeah. Well, it, it's just, you know, some areas like in Northern California where this happened, it's not very diverse. So I'm thankful, like, I grew up in a very diverse area. You know, so I, I grew up as a minority. So for me, it's I'm used to being like that. But, you know, this little girl, she grew up where she was a majority and there was no minority. Very sheltered. There are no methods? Oh, there's crackhead method, drunks. You name. There's, there was this, oh, what was the name of that group? Something clan. It wasn't Ku Klux Klan, but it was, it was some kind of a redneck organization for people that drink. And I can't remember what it was called. And I'd, a- I'd a- ask my friend, what's that? Hooters? A- 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 <laughs> no. No, that's, that's for those that are quitting drinking. That, the quit, that's the Quitters Club. Those it it depends. Hey, come to Washington, you will hear, if you, you come to Washington, you will find out AA is not just for quitters. Uh, the, it's the name of the Clampers. That's what it is. It's a bunch of rednecks that all they do is get together and drink. The Clamptons? No, Clampers. Like, you clamp onto something, but ERS, Clampers. Just feel like somebody should be named Jed. There probably is a Jed, a Jedediah, freaking Rob and Bob and whatever other redneck names there are. Oh, man. So how's everybody else doing? I asked Ronnie, but I, he's, he's working. He's on he's, century duty. <laughs> so he just, he just listens. Every once in a while, he'll turn his camera on and give you a thumbs up. He's having an R. Kelly moment. He'll listen from the closet. (laughs) You guys are all too talkative tonight. Defensive. Uh, Well, um. like borderline exhausted so what time is it it's 10 o'clock almost 10 o'clock Oop, i'm sorry almost 9 30 now i've got another report i've only been out out of my house once since 2020 february 2020 so pretty boring life well i got to drive today Ooh, how was that? Uh, wasn't bad. I found out that my wife still backseat drives. And, uh, but, uh, I've been trying to get a appointment with the uh, neurologist. And it was like sometime in the middle of July, end of July. And I told her, I said, listen, I have been to five different doctors. And every one of them said, there's no reason why I can't drive, but none of them wants to say, go ahead and do it. I said, so I'm done. I'm, I'm driving. And, uh, so I got a dirty look and she said, well, I'm going with you. So, yeah, just a little short trip. And then the neurologist called me back and said, if you're willing to see a physician's assistant, we could see you on Monday. So I'm driving to the neurologist appointment. And if they don't like it, they'll have to get over it. Yeah, they're not bad. I'm... Sometimes they're more personable than regular doctors. Well, this girl's a she's a, a PA. I told my wife, I said, I'm looking on her website 
she is the first person you see when you go on their website and she's the physician's assistant. I said, you would think they would have like a neurologist would be the first one you'd see. So I read her, I read her profile. It's like, you know, got five stars all the way around. So. And at this point, it's just me trying to check another box off. You know, because I wasn't even going to go see one. And my cardiologist goes, well, you did have a stroke, so you should really see one. I don't know what he thinks. You know, what do they like? What do they even do? I mean, I don't have a clue. I don't know. For strokes, I have no idea. I mean, is she going to do anything different than they've done in the hospital? Here, squeeze, squeeze my hand, squeeze this hand. All right, they're about even, you know. I... Follow my fingers. Yeah, we did a lot of that. Then we did it with flashlights. Uh, I don't know. It just seems like a waste of $10, but. Oh, wow. I'm just looking at this thing I ordered, and they're like, we we just finished our batch, and order's ending in one, you know, this number, shipping out next week, and then I look at my order number, and there's a whole, like, 100,000 more, and they said it's going to be 12 to 20 weeks, but, you know, I'm impatient. So you're looking at probably 19 and a half, right? Probably. I hate the, or, or they'll ship it on the 20th week and it's going to take it'll take two weeks to get to me I'm doing that crypto mining so I ordered equipment to do more of it hmm. uh, so, so what do you need like a special pickaxe or uh, no, so there's different ways to do mining. You can have like a PC set up and, you know, run a program and do a blockchain like that. Or you buy a special, almost like a Wi-Fi router that uses um, Bluetooth and oh, what technology is it? Lo-fi. Hmm. Uh, but as vehicles, if you put in a high traffic area as vehicles or people walking by that have the Bluetooth on their phones, mm -hmm. it'll catch those and signal them and report back to the network. And for all those that you do, you're earning cryptocurrency. And what do they do with this information? I don't know. I don't give a shit. I just want some money. Skynet. <laughs> just saying. Probably. Well, the whole thing with mining is like, is literally like it sounds. So, you know, for precious metals, you actually have to go into the ground, you have to dig it up, you have to process it and do all these things. And that's, they just made a digital version of that. This is what they want to pay you with. So you have to spend um, your Wi-Fi connection to the internet plus electricity. So there's about five watts a month worth of electricity is what it takes. Resistance is futile. I'm just thinking that's probably the reason I get all this spam mail. No, that's because you go on. That's because you register on the sites and those sites will sell your information. God, I spent two okay. hours unsubscribing to stuff. And well, it's some yeah, of them, home. it's like literally impossible to unsubscribe because it just runs you around in a loop. Yeah. Don't, don't click the links. Just, if you're using Gmail, just let the filter block it and, you know, set it and forget it. I think what I'm going to start doing is sending them about 20 emails a day because maybe they'll get tired of it too. No, what you can do like with the snail mail, junk mail, if they have those prepaid envelopes, just stuff a bunch of shit in it and then send it back on their dime. Yeah, I've done that. We had uh, God years ago. Uh, when I was doing uh, computer stuff with the sheriff's department, 
I had this program that I acquired that would literally crash a mail server in about five minutes. And uh, my daughter starts getting all this porn mail, you know, my 13 year old daughter. And oh I, I, I sent him a thing, a nice thing and said, Hey, this is a 13 year old girl. Stop sending this. And their response was to send even more. So I said, final warning, not another piece. And the next day she got some and I crashed their email server. And then like, as soon as I did it, I was like, that was probably not a bright thing to do because that was probably more illegal than what they were doing. And uh, so I, I sat for about a week, waiting for the FBI to come knocking on the door. And uh, I said, yeah, maybe they were afraid to report it because. Right. That's like the, the crackhead saying, I gave her my money, but I didn't get my crack. <laughs> I think I saw that on an episode of Cop. I think that was a real thing. Well, I don't know. It's just, it's got to be a better way to deal with, with all this spam. Yeah. It's I think our politicians, instead of renaming stuff, would come up with a law with a little bit of teeth in it like you must have an unsubscribe button that works the first time and every time because if you send a second piece after somebody unsubscribes it's going to cost you a thousand dollars for every piece yeah with technology today i like the ones that say oh it'll take you know 48 to 72 hours for us to complete bullshit it took like, you 27 seconds to get me on that list right and then do you remember, do you remember the, um, now what was that registry, that service you could pay for that was like, do not call or, the, yeah, the do not call list? Yeah. That shit's a joke. That stuff doesn't even work. <laughs> they have a Never free, did. they have a free version that is, well, that's the one I but you gotta, for, you right? gotta register like every year. There now, was one that goes around like eight. It all it does is it's silent air, or it'll ask you a series of questions and it'll record your voice and get you to say yes. And so then it'll build a script to put you in terms of service agreement so that they can bill you. That was big. Yeah. So if you, if you say, Sam, don't answer, just hang that shit up. Yeah, I'm like I when I when I get those calls, it's I'm like, why do you keep calling? Stop calling me. You have a no, do not call list. And then the computer gets all messed up because it's not used to that, I guess. But uh, there's a guy, he, he gets scammers all the time and then he scams them back and he just fucks with them. So oh, cool. my grandson loves doing that. Because T Mobile. It will tell tell you with probably about ninety percent accuracy. This is probably a spam call, and he will jump on those calls, and he'll he'll answer. Uh, this is Blake Acapetti from Glidey Chair. How can I help you? And then he'll spend. They're trying whatever they're trying to do to him. He's trying to sell them a Glidey Chair, and uh, he those, had some those spam risk calls. Most yeah. of those are from actual fucking businesses. The scam calls go through without any effort because it's always, oh, somebody registered your name with Sheridan Hotels. Every That's like the majority of the fucking phone calls I get. The ones are from like, you know, people I need to pay a bill to or something. Those ones come up spam. Mm. Well, my favorite is... I, I must get, I, I don't know how many a day trying to extend the warranty on my car. And I, I finally got somebody on the line and I said, do you think I would trust you to work on my car? And give me one reason why. And they go, well, what do you mean? I says, I have gotten 15 calls from your company saying, this is your last chance. 
if you don't respond, we're not going to call you anymore. And you're not going to be able to extend the warranty on your car. So I hang up and then you call me right back. So I already know you're a bunch of liars. I'm, I'm not de- doing business with you. Just take my name off your list. <laughs> my favorite is when you get the call from Microsoft. And right, from- we need your password. It has expired. Yeah, your computer has been infected and we need to take control of it. So we and I will let that guy go on for an hour and then I'll go, oh, wait a minute. I have a Mac. (laughs) And honestly, if I if I didn't have a Mac, I would still tell him that. Oh, yeah, they don't know. It's crazy. Like they they have these big old scam rings. Uh, and a lot of them are in India and it's a whole call center and that's all they do is they just they just call to, to scam people out of money like there was this one hacker he he kept them on the phone he got into their computers into their server found their clothes oh their, yeah I remember their, that their uh, surveillance cameras and stuff and he's like tell them what he's wearing and stuff and I'm like Damn, get him. Didn't he like wipe? Yeah. Didn't he like wipe their entire system one time? I don't know about that one, but I know that they were doing, at first they were sending like glitter bombs to these people, but then they went a step further and they were, they were trying to get to the people at the very top of the list um, who runs the scams. Cause they'll be like, they'll be in these call centers in India, but then they'll pay somebody who lives stateside to collect the money and stuff and so it, you know they're mules and it's just it's crazy i like the ones where they they want you to be a secret shopper because i actually did that and i know how it works and uh but they'll like, like I'll, I'll get a package in the mail and uh you know, they got the check in there or the money order, whatever it is. And I have yet to get one, one where, when I go to verify the money order that it's, it's real. And, uh, the one, the one guy sent me a postal money order and he did a good job on it. Cause I brought it down to post office and the girl goes, Oh yeah, I cash this for you. I said, I want you to see if it's real first. And she's like, looking at it. I said, you better check. Cause I'm pretty sure it's, it's a, it's a forgery and uh, she checked and it was and uh, i sent the guy because he had he had a, uh, had given me an email i said yeah your your uh, money order was a fake so you know we're not going to be doing anything uh, other than turning it over to law enforcement and he's like that was real and if you don't return it i'm gonna i'm gonna call the police on you so i gave him the number of the police department and uh finally i just like backtracked and i don't even know if i could do that anymore because i don't even remember how but i like backtracked to find out where he was located based on the email and Mm -hmm. uh i said uh you you still living in atlanta uh because i may have turned this information all over uh over to the uh, georgia state police so that they can come get you and uh Oh. Then I didn't hear from I didn't hear from him anymore. So I'm hoping I scared him enough that he moved, because that would be That's really crazy. inconvenient. <laughs> Bank of America, I brought 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 them one of the packets, and they're like, "Can we keep this?" I said, "Sure, just give me copies of it. Give me copies of everything. You can have have the originals." But I, you got to wonder how, who is so stupid that they're going to go and, you know, here's $500, go get uh, $400 worth of gift cards from Walmart, scrape the thing off the back so I have the number to activate them and scan them and send, send me the scan and keep the other hundred. Yeah. I mean, you, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. You won't get all of them, but you'll hit enough of them. You do real, uh, real secret shopping. It's like, 
we'll pay you $15. And it's, it's like, usually takes you about an hour between going to wherever it is they want you to go and buy and whatever it is that they want you to buy and then returning it. Cause you didn't want it in the first place. Yeah. Those are easy to spot though. Like there's a people behave a certain way. Cause when I was working at Arby's, like the, the way the guy was ordering over the speaker, I'm like, this, this guy's a secret shopper. Like I know it, let me handle it. And sure enough, it was, he handed me a little piece of, piece of paper oh you passed good job I was like i know i cheated i knew it was you uh, <laughs> like i mean see, not I, that i didn't give good service anyway but yeah see i never got that mine was always don't don't let them know who you are because we may send you back there and uh my favorite was when they would they would give you movie tickets and they, they give you these movie passes and i'm thinking to myself this movie theater has got to realize by this time who these passes are coming from. I don't know. I don't know how that stuff works anymore. Speaking of movies, I'm so mad. The theater that we want to go to stopped showing Mortal Kombat. And all the other shitty ones around us are showing it. It's the only one I want to see. That's out in theater. That's out in theater. Yeah, there's some other ones that I don't even know what the hell they are. Uh, I don't even remember what they were. I'd have to go back to the site. Pretty much done with movie theaters until they come up with a new idea. I know. I got my AMC stock. I'm going to get rich. I used to work at uh, Regal. And Regal and United Artists uh merged and this is why movie theaters are all dying regal was gone under big time so they merged with united artists who was doing really well and what management team do you think they keep mm -hmm. the cheap one yeah they 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 keep the management team that was driving the other theater into the ground and get rid of the management team that was making money. Well, in their defense, technology is pretty much running out of business. And you can get an 85 inch TV, high def TV off Amazon for less than two grand now. Yeah. But even like the, they were, they were even pre pandemic, they were doing stuff like certain cable providers you could get in theater release movies at home. Oh, so yeah, early. For theaters. Yeah. But then you got, you got um, bootleggers that are so good. Like Disney Plus, when they first started streaming shit, it was on that streaming service for free. Like I didn't have to pay for anything. And it was good quality. Yeah, I remember my son when Avatar came out. He had it a week before it hit the theater. God, now I'm feeling old. You remember Haji Bernie? Vision. Well, he, he sold me my first MacBook and it had Adobe Creative Suite on it, which is like was like over a thousand dollars at the time. I think it was like twelve hundred dollars. And I asked him, you know, where did you get $1,200 for Adobe Creative Suite? And he kind of rolled his eyes and said, uh, that, that's a demo copy. I said, LimeWire. I said, when does it expire? He goes, never. I said, and why does it never expire? Well, I might have gone into the, the, the code and disabled the thing that tells adobe that you even started the demo i said okay i says i'm telling you now when the fbi shows up knocking on the door i am throwing you right under the bus i remember there was an issue with like the game world of warcraft what people would do is they would they would have a friend give them the install disk but then go into the store and open it up and grab the little slip with the serial number inside the thing and it sucked because you, know, you don't know how many people bought theirs and then all of a sudden they can't play it because it was already registered. registered. 
but yeah. And then there were those jerks who had extra computing power and had robots playing characters on World of Warcraft, just building them up so they could sell them off. Yeah. Yeah. That was like real currency for a while there. Yeah, those guys I mean, were jerks. Oh, this this place where we did this uh, headshot on Thursday, they have a robotics building. Uh, they have an entire building dedicated to uh, robotics. And they were, they were telling us, like, they got this little girl robot that they set loose in the parking lot to go talk to people to see if, if it can fool them. And uh, they got a couple of those uh, robot dogs. I was like, oh, man, I hope they let them out while we're here. <laughs> I just want to see them. But that, that must be so neat to work in a place like that. You alive over there, James? Yeah, I'm tired. Jared, I got a hold of Jared. So I was just texting him. How's he doing? He says he's got his head above water. He's, you know, been put through the ringer. You know, as vague as it gets with him, basically. Well, all of us do, really. Yeah, told you. Bunch of chameleons. <laughs> I've, I've tried, like, the last time I talked to him before, that was freaking middle of April. We're a bunch of chameleons. How you doing? I'm doing great. And we even believe ourselves sometimes. He's in that reflecting. Believe ourselves until our social worker emails us, reminding us of how fucked up we are. Well, I'm married. I have a wife to do that. I don't need a social worker. Oh, well. Lucky. 41 years. Yeah, yeah. Rub it in. Rub it in. I wanted to really do something nice and go somewhere. And that ain't happening again. Maybe next year. We're going to California in September. What do you wanna? No, we're not going to Tijuana. No, do you mm. want? Do you really want to? It's California. Yeah, I'm a California native. I got my my family's out there. We're gonna do San Diego and go by the old base and the old apartment that we had, and then um, we're gonna stay at the Hotel de Coronado. Then we're going to stay a few nights in L.A., see some family there, and then drive up to Northern California and see family there. But the uh, we, my fiance and I met in the Navy. So, like, first we ran into each other in Great Lakes during training, and then we both ended up stationed on the same ship in San Diego. And we used to hang out and stuff in, in San Diego and chill the Chilawana and Mexico and all that stuff. So it's kind of a memory lane type thing. And then when we get married next year, we're actually going to go to Chicago for our honeymoon. Check out great mistakes. <laughs> yeah, we did uh, Williamsburg, Virginia for ours. Did you know there's such thing as a Hollywood Marine? I had never heard that before. A Hollywood what? A Hollywood Marine. Hollywood Marine. So it's a Marine that, that got their globe in Paris Island versus um, MCRD San Diego. Or not San Diego. Um, Oceanside. Oceanside? What the fuck is it? MCRD... San Diego. It's San Diego. What's the difference? I would think a Marine would be a Marine. It is, but that's their whole, like, you know how the Marines are like, oh, we're Department of the Navy. We're the men's department. You know, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, when, when 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 they can march across the ocean to get where they need to go, then they can brag. Well, they still they're in the desert, so they're still in you know inclement weather. They're still going into the water. I don't know how many sharks are in California water versus Paris Island. Or am I thinking of seals? Uh. You're talking Marines and Navy. That's all confusing. The Army is so much easier. No, you've got all the different stocks in freaking like battalion and platoon and I don't even understand the structure if what unit platoon battalion is that how it goes like from smallest to largest platoon company battalion brigade division then you go core or branch depending the easiest way to identify the army, there's the infantry, then there's everybody else. Yeah, see, for us, division is like your immediate department, people that do this, your same MOS. And then your your unit would be there he is. the information side. And then you have your ship. Hey! Eddie's! Um. <laughs> Then you have your ship. Then you have front leader rest position. Boy, somebody looks happy today. I've had the best past couple days. It's been amazing. Yeah, I needed it badly. Good. And you forgot your scripted words, Top. What's my scripted words? You're supposed to say half right face. Oh, no, 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 I got to catch you off guard with that one. Now you're expecting it right now. I can't say it when you're expecting it. <laughs> oh, we'll see. We all screwed up because you got to call us to attention before anything can happen. Attention on deck. Seriously, Jeremy, how the fuck am I going to call you to attention? <laughs> well, me, you're not. You consider attention. <laughs> no I can't love you brother <laughs> you're permanent permanent Addy <laughs> yeah you, you could think about it being in attention no he's, he's gonna... I can honestly say screw all of you P4 profile dead man <laughs> he's got his middle finger in attention to me right now <laughs> could be or my parade rest going on. No, he's smoking a joint. Ugh. But anyway, I got a surprise for you guys. Uh oh. You bought an iguana? I bought a what? An iguana? No. Not a life. That would have surprised no. me. No, if you want me to pull my lizard out, I can, but <laughs> I want an iguana, a- not a baby lizard. Oh, Only yeah. if I save fifteen percent or more on life on insurance. <laughs> I found a dog. Oh, you got a puppy. No. Oh, he's a big so, one. Is that a rescue husky? That's not you mine. Found the dog. Or yeah. you got it from Cedric because that looks familiar. That's oh, what I yes. thought. I forgot that right. You flew up there. Oh my god! I thought I recognized that dog. <laughs> so really, Cedric inherited you. Another mouthpiece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He adopted me. Um, he's gonna put me put me into a foster care system. So 
Are you going to have an indoor get you a job? What's that? James. Okay, I was going to say, is he going to keep you indoor or outdoor? Because I've seen those, you know, Alaska things where the dogs are outside on the chain all the time. Oh, yeah, no, he's definitely like, keeping me outdoors. He said something about a smell. I don't know. <laughs> that He's got his own little dog run. Yeah. So. It was like a 10-second delay from that side. Uh, uh, yeah. Now I know why you're having such a good time. Even worse. I forgot you were up there. Yeah. No, it's been cool. We uh, we went out to Denali today and uh, hoping to see some wildlife. And I think all we saw was a squirrel, which was jacked up because <laughs> before we even took off, like while we were getting ready to, to get dressed, getting our shoes on and, and stuff to get in the car, there was a moose right across the street. Like we didn't even have to leave to see the real wildlife. <laughs> But we drove all the way out to Denali to see a squirrel. So you could have looked out my window and seen, yeah, like three of them. <laughs> well, like I said, you know, we fighting with the birds the because they they all want to use the same bird feeder. Mm -hmm. Walked outside to get in the car, and there's a moose. Drive two hours down the road, see a squirrel. Squirrels can be fun now if you grease the pole. <laughs> that the bird feeder is on. <laughs> <laughs> At least it would be entertaining. This is a this is Alaska. We like to wet the poles so the squirrel's nuts get stuck. <laughs> yeah, not not cold <laughs> enough here to do that. I I wanted to uh, wire a little electric into the pole. My wife was like, "You are not." <laughs> Have you seen the, um, they have YouTube videos and stuff out there, but like people would set up these little obstacle courses for the squirrels to get through their backyard and stuff. And they had this like launcher that if they got to this one platform and they stopped, you know, whatever, the, the thing would launch the squirrel like 30 feet. <laughs> yeah, they, they had that little caption, no animals were harmed in the making of this video. Like and they, each, each time they tried to get further along the course. Yeah. No, those things are, those things are more, and they have more lives than cats. See what that guy doesn't realize is he he's giving them a basic training to fuck know, it up right? later. Because they were already Turn doing out. well enough to tune our wires and shit. Now they're going to be able to put, go through our defenses and everything. You got Delta Force oh, yeah. squirrels. Fucking <laughs> 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 squirrel operators. <laughs> Next is going to be like Angry Birds, freaking. <laughs> Squirrel's gonna come back with some damn commie terrorist on a string talking about I fucked him up. <laughs> you know, freaking Semtex, send it with the squirrel, stick it to the back of it. I was seriously thinking about getting an airsoft rifle and just like popping them every time I see one. The smoke you assault one, they bring three. Ooh. What what animal pray tell is that? Oh, uh, that's uh, pork ribs. Uh, Starbot, you didn't go kill a hog out in the wild. No, no. Didn't wrestle a bear down with my bare hands. Bite to that fish. Go down to the river. Say fuck. Not it, to mine. say that I couldn't. Yeah, not to say that I couldn't. I obviously could. You know, just you know, I was just busy. I had things to do. All <laughs> yeah, right, pedicure. That bear's about to catch these hands. <laughs> All right, gents. I'm calling it tonight. I'm my sugar high is crashing. I'm crashing. All right. <laughs> you just need like one more candy bar. No, it was it was um ginger ale. Thank you. Or join the Marines and be a real man. No, you know what? <laughs> I think they make gummy bear crayons now, so it's safer for them. Probably had too many people calling out. You know, get stuck up in their nose, stuck in their ear and shit. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. See you later. Uh, 
All right. Peace Have out. a good one, James. All right. You too. Take care, guys. So ask Cedric if he saw his pictures yet. I have not. He said no. No? Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, I want to ask how you I'm liked him. Right. Right. Wow. You sent him some naked pictures? <laughs> no, he uh, he wanted me to uh, do work on a couple of photographs he sent me, and I uh, I, I finally finished them oh. up and uploaded them. Is this for the calendar? No, nah, I think it was for. Is this for the calendar? You're not one of them could be. One of them could be. You put yourself in a fireman suit, send them to him. <laughs> no, I just uploaded them to my uh, online storage site. Mm. So he can download them from there if he likes them. Okay. I think he's looking now, but I don't know. Yeah, the links in uh, Facebook Messenger. Is it my messenger? Yeah. Oh, that's right. He didn't know where it was at. Ooh, looks like that dog was having fun with something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Must kill was, the fuzzy. That was the squirrel we saw. <laughs> you know, it's left of it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They do love ripping stuff apart. Yeah. You found it? He found it. Oh, okay. Yeah, he'll check it out. <clears throat> yeah, it was, uh, I did a little quick pass through Jeremy's town and then headed up this way. Got some fish and chips and some clam chowder and a beer and then uh, boarded the next flight and Continue north. Yeah, you were damn near 100 miles north of me. <clears throat> Still the closest town you got, unless you want to claim Oregon. No, I'm right in between. In the middle of nothing. All right, I'll give you the choice then. No, because nobody ever says they're from a certain town. Are you from Seattle or, or, or Portland? Neither, Centralia. <laughs> and and the only reason I can claim that is even on the rail system it's midway point mm. between Seattle and Portland what was that there was a good rail place of Tukwala is that what it is Tequila Tequila yeah Decent casino. They have casinos there? Yeah. No, I'm kidding. Hell, with how you guys talk about Project Refit, with them talking about it on the West Coast, or the East Side, I've thought about putting together a little veteran travel to the casinos. That would hey, be cool. Hey, I see this shit on YouTube all the damn time on, and on Facebook that these uh, personalities go traveling around to the casinos. Why the hell couldn't we? Yeah, no, I mean, everybody loves the casinos. I got a, my wife's aunt, that's what she is. So my wife's, my, my aunt-in-law, is that is that a word? So she lives up in uh, Seattle area, and she loves hitting the casinos up there. So I don't, I have, don't even ask me which ones, but I'm sure she could be a good resource to let you know which ones pay more. Oh, I've I've got ample information about her on the casinos of Washington, and which ones to yeah not go there. There you go. 
and it has nothing to do with the gambling aspect. It's um, you might sit down and catch something. Oh God! <laughs> no, no, I'm. I don't have any of that kind of info. I can give you some SoCal stuff on uh, payouts, but not not on STDs. <laughs> Hit a Morongo when you get down to SoCal. That's out in the, that's out toward Palm Springs desert area though. But all the other stuff, more inland, more in the, in the spots that are closer to the beach and all that stuff. No, no, those those guys will jack you. The Morongo, not bad. No, I'm looking at either doing the trips around Washington or putting a group together and. How about going to fucking Vegas? Yeah, buddy. After this whole mask thing is over, because, well, I can't put one on it in is. the first place, so... You didn't hear? Yeah, you didn't hear the mask thing's over, man. I'm Except not in New Jersey. It. Hey, I'm no. not, not going to believe it to hold fully... CDC until, said so. Uh, yeah, give it three days. CDC said, as long as you're vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask anywhere, except like the airport or some some other. Like, there's only like a handful of things. <clears throat> so, right, give them 72 hours. They might change their mind, and they might have forgot they said something else. And somebody not, said it on a personal level. Yeah, I'm not disagreeing with that. I could I could definitely see that happening. Yeah, I mean, on the actual science side of it, um, well, duh, but on the administrational paperwork side of things, yeah, no, that's fluid motion. It changes every 72 hours. It sounds like the Army. <laughs> Congratulations, civilians. You get to experience what the Army sees. <laughs> Hoorah. <laughs> Hurry up. Sit down. Yeah. Now, now, if only we could do that. Hurry up, get to the office. Now, wait. <laughs> See, they could have fixed this whole vaccination thing if they told everybody to show up to the field house at 11 o'clock. Yeah, but showing up to the field house at 11 o'clock has to come with the 15 minutes prior to the 15 minutes prior to the 15 minutes prior. Then there's an inspection and 30 minutes prior to that. And next thing you know, you're showing up at 1 p.m. for an 11 o'clock formation. Right. Uh, but by but, now, everybody would have got their fucking shots. And there you go. Because there's no three-day weekend unless you get your fucking shot. <laughs> and don't make a fucking snap fucking dress inspection on Sunday happen. Top did, does get a little picky. Did I ever tell you about the time I, uh, I got reported to IG for making people wear their dress uniforms? <laughs> You're nicer to me. They just got pissed because I put them. Yeah. They just got pissed because I had them put their dress uniforms on. I got reported <laughs> to IG for having them do a hand receipt layout every day for two weeks straight. I, I didn't even get that crazy. It was just one day. Wear your dress uniform. I want an inspection. I want to see it. Oh, by the way, because we have a ball in two weeks. I mean, there was a reason. It even had a purpose. It wasn't just out of the blue. Still got see, reported. I, mean. <laughs> I was like, see, and I got. I mean, I got obviously, reported. it went nowhere. It went Mine nowhere. had a reason. Uh, Mine had a reason. I took over the section. There were no signed hand receipts, <clears throat> and half of everybody's toolboxes were missing. I've I've done that before too. Yeah, and we spent an entire month uh, re-inventorying everything in the fucking world under well, the see, sun. I only did two weeks. Well, and they had Saturday and Sunday off. We had we had to pull uh, we had to pull property book into the whole thing. That was a that was another big thing. property book is not That's not a why fun. they had to do the layout. Yeah. The property book layout for the commander is at the end of the two weeks. And I still got turned into fucking IG. 
I wasn't being an asshole. We went from missing everything to missing nothing. And nobody got a statement of charges. And I get turned in. All right. I'll be right back. I got to go take some uh, medication. Yes, sir. How hey, you doing, Ronnie? Ronnie? How you doing, Ronnie? It might be a little loud, but I'm actually at work. How you doing, though? Pretty good. Working my ass off at both ends. Yeah, I can see that. You got yourself. Is that the second job or is this a new job? Second job. Okay. I'll be here until two in the morning. So the hours on the other job, did they cut back or are they still the same? Uh, roughly 47 hours this week. On one job or both? One job. And how much are you spending on the second job? Uh, let's see, 7.30 to 1.30. Uh, I did it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, another guy covered it. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I got it. So five days, and you said um, six hours. So that's another 30 yeah, hours. Bro. Yeah. So what are you saving for? Trying to get that damn truck legal. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm 900. I, I was a dumbass when I got the truck. I forgot to put the sales tax in the price. So... Mm -hmm. They need three thousand two hundred dollars to get my truck legal. I am what now nine hundred short. That's, That's the sales tax on that truck. That's ridiculous. Aren't you in some Midwest state? Like this is not California. Yeah, this is what Missouri's doing. It's a thirty thousand dollar truck, and they want three thousand three thousand to get the truck legal. Two hundred is my late fee because it's been expired since November. That's what you guys get for letting people march into gated communities and suing people who pull weapons on their own property. Yeah, well. <laughs> what happened to going to pick apart and just getting the piece off yourself? Nah, I got sick of working on cars. That's why I got this new truck, which I need to put a picture of it up on here sometime. Or you've probably been on my page and seen a few of the pictures. Yeah. I've been making a truck look mean. So let me ask you this. When you get that extra 900 bucks that you're looking for right now, are you done with this job or is there another goal? I uh, think I'll be done with this job or go down to at least just two nights, which would be the Friday and Saturday okay. nights because they pay more. Okay. That's my goal. So you might. So you do have kind of another little goal on the backside. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm just doing it temporarily, and I'm getting both jobs done. I'm getting sleep where I can get it because I get I have terrible sleep as it is, thanks to my ex. If I'm lucky, I'll get three or four hours a night, even if I wasn't working. Yeah. Well, I was just so going to say. Like, like, right, now I'm, right now I'm getting paid not to sleep. <clears throat> Because I don't yeah. sleep as it is, anyways. <laughs> yeah, um, I got. I, I feel you. I feel you 100 percent because I'm in the same boat. I um, I was at yeah, like Cedric said, I was out clean cold last night, like a, like a mad dog, right? But that was for like two hours, <laughs> so which is amazing that I can get that. Um, but you know, be careful. I'm up here now because I needed a break. So I know what it feels like, you know, I'm actually planning on doing that. I'm planning on doing yeah. a little break in July. The, okay. My birthday, the day before my birthday through the weekend, I'm taking time off work and just going down to uh, Lake of the Ozarks here in Missouri and just get away from everything for a minute. You got to be careful. I heard they, uh, they smuggle Mexican cartel drugs through there and 
all kinds of craziness. I go to Lake of the Ozarks twice a year. Oh, you haven't Not seen that. that show. Oh, <laughs> you haven't seen that show? Uh, they all different kinds of shows. Now I never know what oh. to believe and not to believe anymore. <laughs> the, the show, the Ozarks, that's an amazing show. It's actually called the Ozarks. It's got Jason Bateman in it. <laughs> it's a pretty, it's a pretty badass show. But, oh, yeah. I just, but, eh, I'm taking care <laughs> of things. I mean, thanks to her, I'm the world's lightest sleeper. And you can ask my roommate that. Because there was one night she was coming home. I'm such a light sleeper. I can hear her putting her key in the front door. I was up before the dog sat up. Mm. Yeah, I'm working on that. But (laughs) thanks to her, it sucks. Just make sure you schedule some time for yourself, like an appointment. Like put it on the calendar and hold to it like an appointment. Um, Especially right now this weekend, I got nothing else planned. Other than being at the house, yeah, I cover this Saturday night and Sunday night, but I got all day until I need to be here at 8 o'clock. Good deal. So I got all the time in the world through the morning to try to sleep in and just do things around the house that I want to get done. There you go. I get back and working on a camper. Yep. So – Got to take care of yourself. Like they say, uh, no greater love hath any man than that to give uh, his life for his his brothers, right? But um, at the same time, they also say that you have to love your neighbor as you love yourself in the same sense, okay? If you don't love yourself, then imagine how you're loving your neighbor. You know, and so you really kind of that that whole self care thing is real cost. It really, really is a big deal. And sometimes I even forget it. I get locked in this whole thing of you know giving back so much to so many. Like I said, giving my love to, to all my my brothers and laying down my life for my my brothers. But then I have to revert back to that second part that I was talking about, to where I say if I'm not loving myself then the love I'm giving them is haphazard just as much as I'm giving to myself. You know what I mean? So, so yeah, taking care of yourself is a big deal. So whether you're, whether you're, uh, whether you're talking about actually being out there for your buddies or you're talking about being out there for the rest of your family or whatever it is, you know, you just gotta be, you gotta have a full tank in order to give. Most definitely. So yeah, proud of you. You know, good job. I, every time we log in, I see you bouncing now. So just making sure that you're taking care of yourself too. So I just wanted to check in on you. I'm taking care of myself. I mean, I'm actually really happy and proud of myself. My house is almost paid off soon. I only nice. owe 16, 16500 on my house. Jesus, and I'm man. only 35. I'm only 35. And then once the house is paid off, my other goal is I'm going to double up the payments on that truck, get that truck paid off. And then I owe nobody. I can actually take vacations, go take trips places, and not worry about having to figure out how I'm going to pay that next bill. I mean, right now I can cover my bills. This is just covering trying to get my truck legal then i'm going to cut back on it right but other than that you know i'm just taking each day forward and yeah. taking care of myself taking care of my family and and just doing what i do there you go man yeah love what you do and and have fun doing it you know and even work hard i'm a true believer in and get out there and grind you know and, and work hard but i'm also i'm also one of those guys that falls in the pit of my own hard work every once in a while so just oh i had someone yesterday i had someone yesterday like ronnie go home relax you don't have to work the bar tonight and uh i went home instead of relaxing i mowed my grass (laughs) (laughs) sounds about right sounds about right it needed to be cut before the rain comes in this weekend 
Yeah. Good deal, man. Well, I can rock on. I know you. what you got left to pay on your house is like half of what I have to pay on just one of my vehicles. So congratulations. <laughs> well, I was, the guy that originally helped me get the house originally got it for like 53000 And yeah. he set it up as a nine-year loan at 850 a month. He took care of the insurance, the taxes, and his interests, then arrest his principal. Well, I decided to take care of the insurance. So more did I pay him is going to principal. And then each year he overtakes, takes a little more than he needs to on the taxes. There's about 350 left over at the end of the year. He throws that right back onto the principal again, which just keeps dropping and dropping and dropping, which I'm going to be paid off before the nine years is up. I'll be paid off at least probably eight. Yeah, nice. That's awesome. So, I mean, if, jealous. if I didn't find this guy, I, I would have been renting. He, he was a godsend. God's blessed me with having him. God's blessed me with getting my truck, a good job. And I try my best to you know, give back to other people because God's been blessing me so much, too. That's awesome. That's amazing. Yeah, the only way I, I have to look at it is that I think the, the last statistic was like 83% of all Americans are in like hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. So that means I'm living the American dream. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually, I actually, thanks to my ex, I was in a lot of debt. So I found a great lawyer that finally got my bankruptcy done. So I owe nobody else right now. There you I don't go, even buddy. have a credit card no more. I just, my house and my truck and my bills and a cell phone. That's it. There you go, That's bro. all I got. I mean, well, I do owe my boss. He helped me get a new back door for my house. So I owe him a yeah. hundred bucks in case he's watching. Um, <laughs> I, I do owe him a hundred for the new door because my back door got broken in. And it has a piece of plywood over the back window now. And he sold me this door that's a high security door where it, it has a deadbolt in the center. Then it has a deadbolt top and bottom that is all hooked together. You lock the one, it locks all three. Got it. And it has a you know, safety glass on it. So it's going to take forever to break the glass out. <laughs> so like, okay, try getting in my house. That's, if you get through that door, I got nine other reasons why you ain't going to come back in. Easier to go through the wall, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Concrete wall or uh, you're going to meet my uh, my nine friends and your buddy. <laughs> what size are the those? One I carry with me everywhere. Is that uh, a nine? They're nine millimeter right now. Yeah. yeah, I got a nine and a 38. That's all I got. I think we got a Cocker Spaniel visitor. <laughs> she's, like, she's like, it's hiding in here somewhere. Thank you. Yeah. The Sweet. fun part, IDing people when I don't want to be ID'd. Yeah. Yeah. I got to make sure everybody's 21 or older, especially since I'm working with the manager himself. And then they get offended when you don't ask for their ID like me. <laughs> uh, well, I, I had a lady the other day. I know she was way older than 21, and I asked her for ID because she looks younger. And she's like, really? I'm like, yeah, really. I give me, I, Can I please see your ID? <laughs> Just say, hey, I'm just trying to compliment you. I thought she was going to take it as a compliment, but instead she got pissed off at me. I'm like, sorry I did my job? Yeah, I know. I mean, it's what I'm paid to do. And what's nice yeah. is this is cash under the table. Oh, okay. Uh, basically, I was, you know, if I make a certain amount, I have to do a 1099 form or whatever the hell it is. Right. But right, it's, right. Set, yeah, $70 a night. Plus ten dollars off my meal, and then when it comes to Friday and Saturdays, so those are eighty dollars a night plus ten dollars off my meal. Okay. And I'm just here for six hours, and I look pretty at the time. Right. So, getting this beard to look really good, you know. <laughs> I show it off. I'm working on it. I wanted to look like yours, just yeah. without the gray. Without the gray, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm you too go. young for the gray yet. I'm too young for that there gray. You? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you can't you can't get to that level yet. You can get to the you can get to the size. You just can't get to this. Hey, level but you know yet. what's 
you know what's nice is is um I only have 30 more years to look forward to retirement. Nice. Well you're doing good so far. And uh you I know, know I I gotta say that, you know, like I said, there's there's plenty of us that have been on the track and um you know found those hiccups. So never stop listening, never stop learning. Learn from our mistakes, and that way you don't have to. Uh, I've been I've been leaving and learning from my own mistakes and what not to do anymore to get myself forward in my life. Right. And the other part is I don't want to get my health back in order. I I got to get down to two hundred. Um, so, so I yeah, can get off this medication. Where are you at right now? Uh, actually, a little disappointed in myself. It went up instead of down. Uh. So I'm right at 290 when I was supposed to go in the other direction. True. Okay. So if I, if I continuously ask this question, do you think that would be motivating enough to kind of, to have some of those check marks to go along? I think so. And along with uh, my, my younger sister just got me a little more motivated She's doing the I, everybody says it's not healthy, but it's working for her. Uh, she's doing the, the keto diet. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Very little carbs, no sugar. No, I mean, no sugar. Cut yeah. out the soda, you know. Yep. Because I can see, even see it in her face. I saw her the other day and her face is all skinny now. She's no, oh, she's doing great. And I, I was like, I, I want to go ahead and seriously get on that. So do you have a regular, do you have a regular doctor? I do. I actually see him again here in July. Okay. So this is what I'm going to tell you. If you do the keto, all you really like basically have to monitor is your cholesterol. Okay. Cause keto is high protein, low fat and high protein, low fat can raise your cholesterol. Okay. So as long as you have your doctor monitoring your cholesterol, you can actually like balance taking the advantage of keto and being careful if you're if you have your cholesterol monitored does that make sense because yeah, right now the last time he did my cholesterol it was <laughs> he did like my last doctor did he crumbled up the paper and threw it across the room i was like what was that for he's like because your cholesterol is better than mine and i'm your doctor there you go you probably have room <laughs> to do keto then yeah i would say go for it I mean, I don't sit here and eat a whole bunch of shit like everybody else does. I'm unfortunately a very picky eater. There you go, brother. <laughs> Man, if you got if you got room in your cholesterol to do some keto, then do it. Just do it. I, I definitely want to give it a try. I know he's going to do more blood work here in July. Yeah. I got an eye doctor's appointment coming up because it scared the crap out of me the other day. And he says the eye doctor is going to be only one to get a little more answers to it. Um, I was, I was just getting back to the warehouse and out of nowhere, I could not see out of my the peripheral vision of my left eye. I, I, all of a sudden it just disappeared. I got lightheaded and dizzy and everything on my left side. I could not see, like I put my hand right here. I wasn't able to see it. It lasted for like 20 minutes and I got my vision back. So he's got me set up to go see the eye doctor and try to figure out why that could have happened. Okay, but you know what that sounds like to me? It sounds like more stress. More motivation? No, I do have stress. a lot of stress going on. Yeah, you got it. You, and that goes back to that self-care part, just like I was saying before. So. Yeah, but this, you know, that was weird. It was before I even started this. Uh just started this job i mean i was i was I doing fine i wasn't even thinking about anything I or know. stressing wife, over none at that time but it just all of a sudden happened my wife gets the same thing funny enough in the same eye in her left eye she gets it in her left eye as a matter of fact um but it's the same thing it's the stress because i've even yeah. had out of nowhere uh bruno remembered when i was in the hospital and i was trying to do zooms in the hospital while in the bed and um, literally, I think the next day or the day after, out of nowhere, I'm just sitting there and I had a freaking 
you know, panic attack, anxiety attack, something where it felt like I was having a freaking heart attack. Yeah. And this came out of nowhere. And I'm just sitting there in the bed. I, all I did was wake up. I started throwing up. I started shaking. My chest started hurting. I was like, what the hell is going on? So I sit in there, they're monitoring me like every 30 minutes and giving me uh, some other medicine to calm my heart rate back down. And I don't know what the hell that came from. Mm. And this was literally after my sister died and I got really sick again is when I was in a hospital. And this could, still could have been another stress thing too. Yeah. Which is, no, it's, it's getting better, but since this is the first year of her not being here, everything is, it, has, it keeps hitting you harder and harder each time, sure. knowing that she's not here no more. Sure. But you know what? I What I really appreciate about it is that you're saying it out loud. And, and, and the fact that you're saying it out loud, for one, always gives her the voice. You know what I mean? Always, because it's, the more you say it out loud, the more she's actually here with you and, and actually like present and stays alive within your spirit. You know what I mean? So yeah. I love that. Plus, it helps you because if you bottle it up inside, trust me, it's, you, you sit here and listen to so many combat vets talk about their story. And you feel so much sympathy and love and heartache and everything else for what they're talking about. It's the same exact thing for you. You know, it really is. It's the same exact thing of that bottling up and not letting it go and holding it inside that becomes explosive, you know? So the more you talk about it, the more you say it, the more you like voice it out it just becomes that therapy. It becomes that part that not only one helps them to continue to live on like in out loud kind of way, but it also helps you. It helps you kind of, that's like, it's, it really is like that voice therapy almost is that you have to kind of say it out loud. So I appreciate that so much. You, Uh, yeah. I've been, I've been trying to do it a lot because last year, actually, thanks to Sarah, the one that got me started with you guys, she right. came at the right time last year because last year I had three friends that passed away, not from COVID. I, one died from a car accident. Two died from drug overdoses that I didn't even realize they were doing drugs. They hit it so well. Yeah. And then I had three family deaths. My niece that passed away from domestic violence, which I'm trying to get into more stuff about that, talking to people, helping people. And... My uncle passed away in Florida, natural causes. And then my sister passing away um, from her diabetes. She was uh, on dialysis, got yeah. an infection in her foot. Sure. Her, di- her dialysis pulled the infection through her body, and the infection took over and took her life. That's the other reason why I want my health back in order, because I don't want to be in that boat. I lost yeah. my grandfather to diabetes. I lost my sister to diabetes. Uh, my dad and my brother both had diabetes, and I want to get my health back in order and show them it can be done. 100%, brother. And I want yeah. to see them do better. I, I really want to see them do better, especially my dad. I, you know, certain songs pop on the radio, and it's about fathers passing away and stuff like that. I'm like, it gets me worried about my dad and his diabetes. And the other thing I've noticed lately, and it, it did it a lot last year, and it's doing it again this year, knock on wood, nothing has bad has happened yet, but the numbers 9-11, 7-11, and 11-11 keep repeating themselves everywhere. I pick up my phone at the right time to turn it on, and there's that number. One of those numbers is oh, it's showing up everywhere. I look everywhere. It's showing up everywhere. And I'm, my mom told me when that number shows up, instead of negative like it was last year, she said, turn around and try to make it positive. No, like I, I said, they're like 7 Eleven was my grandfather's birthday. So when I see that number, I always say, uh, Hi, Paul. And I, I was like, I, I know you're trying to talk to me. You know, I try to turn around positive direction as much as I can because how last year was such, you know, every time it happened, something bad happened. Now, this year, it keeps happening, 
and I'm going good for the moment. And one of the rest is what, laughing at me. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I fucking love that, man. I really do. Like, I, I love the fact that you saw something <laughs> actually said, let me turn it into something positive. Let me, let me find a way not only to, to, to say just think about it positively, but to do something physically, to say something out loud, you know, to, to turn it into an actionable thing of positivity on the backside. Like, that is amazing. I actually, like I said, I love that story. I love that you, um, that you actually put that. It's just, yeah, that was, that was awesome. Thank I'm you. trying my best to completely you know, turn everything around and make it better, uh, especially after last year. Last year, I was I was such yeah. a wreck, and Sarah's seen it. Yeah. I mean, both times, all three times I've gotten sick with people passing away, and my doctor said it's a condition I actually have. Uh, a lot of stress gets thrown on me. My mm-hmm. body reacts to it, and all of a sudden, I get really sick, and it yeah. lasts for three weeks. Now I'm on medication that's stopping that, that they finally got at the right level that stopped it. But they've, uh, they've noticed it pinpointed after my one best friend passed away, I got really sick. When my niece passed away, I got really, really sick. And as soon as my sister passed away, I was back in the hospital sick again and lost 30 pounds each time it happened. I mean, that's one way to lose weight, but not the right way to lose weight. You're, um, you're a, but it's just a perfect. Um, no, you're a perfect example about how your mental health affects your physical health. In that aspect, like whether whether you're thinking about th- whether you're completely stressed or on the opposite side, like you were saying, you were putting things in a positive spin. If you continue to put those things in a positive spin and cut down on that mental stress then I guarantee that your physical, your physical abilities or your physical, your weight loss, your everything, your, your physical health itself will start to, to improve. Does that make sense? It's just, it's Definitely. really hard. It's really hard for us to capture and manage those mental um, stressors or those mental you know sort of uh blockers or or all those things that we have going on and that's where the battle lies more times than many it's not about you know like i said keto is going to help you i 100 percent believe it and i think that yeah absolutely do that but keto alone is not going to stop things if you continue to stay stressed if you continue to stay you know like wrapped around the axle as far as your mental health then I, I bet you the keto is not going to affect you at all. Does I'm going to definitely try my best. I'm definitely going to keep going in the path I'm going with. Yeah. You no, know, letting it out, thinking positive, pushing forward, and, you know, just, you know, keep doing what I'm doing right now. I think you're doing the right thing. Oh, and, it, that's, and the that's Tootsie awesome. Roll song is on now. Yay. <laughs> That's awesome. So how do you deal with the panic attacks? Uh, it's just all of a sudden it, it shows up and then it, after a few minutes, it just starts slowly going away other than controlling my breathing. Uh, IDs. IDs, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys all for having them. Not do like the guy did the other day saying, can I just tell you my age? No, that don't work. You need the card. (laughs) Thank you guys. (laughs) Yeah, I had that uh, Wednesday night. No, Tuesday night. He's like, can I just tell you my age? I'm like, no, I need the card. How old did he look? Uh, not old enough to be in here. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> He's like, I just had my birthday yesterday. I don't care if your birthday was right now. I need a card to prove it. I'm sorry, buddy. 
<clears throat> so he stayed out in the car while his buddies got drinks. I'm so sorry for him, but no ID, no entry. Yeah, I, I started getting panic attacks wearing the mask when I got out of the hospital. And I never had a panic attack in my life. And I know it's all in my head. I know it, but I can't do anything about it. And I do not like it. Oh, I'm still here. I'm just going to walk around and check these trash cans real quick. The so other Bruno, part of my job. Okay. So, Bruno, you said those panic attacks about the mask are happening recently? Since I got out of the hospital. Never had it happen before. I, I never had a panic attack over anything before. And uh, I'll be walking so my, around and suddenly I, I, it's like I can't breathe. And I, I mean, I wear a pulse ox meter. So I know I got plenty of oxygen and it, it doesn't, it doesn't help. It's like, I don't so know. That makes me, it makes me think that it's not really about the mask. Have you ever kind of sat back and thought like, what is it that you're really thinking about? It, like I'll be in the store with my wife shopping and all of a sudden I'll feel like I can't breathe. So or, if you pull it down, you're fine. Yeah. Well, what I've been doing is like just putting my hand under it and pulling it out. But uh, it's like, I, you know, I check my pulse socks and I, so I know I'm getting plenty of oxygen. So it's got to be, it's got to be in my mind. And I just don't know what, you know, there's got to be a way to take, stop it think, from from triggering do you think you might have developed like a little bit of claustrophobia sense i i don't know i've never been claustrophobic i mean i'm afraid of heights but claustrophobia has never been a problem my wife's claustrophobic it's like she don't yeah. even want to get in an elevator I yeah <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know that about my wife until an elevator got stuck. <laughs> and then, oh, my God. Oh, yeah, it went downhill real fast, didn't it? Oh, yeah, it sure did. She, she turned and she faced the corner and shut her eyes. And she's like, just imagine you're somewhere else. Imagine you're somewhere else. It's not happening. This <laughs> like she was about to freak out so bad. Yeah, and they, they even gave me one of those portable oxygen generators you know, to t take with me. Yeah. And uh, it's like, you know, I'll put it in the car. By the, and and uh, if I start to get that panic attack, I'm like, well, I got oxygen in the car. I'll go. By the time I get out to the car, it's passed. Like just, you know, walking 10, 15 feet without the mask and it's gone. So I know it's in my head. It's got to be in my head. Try putting a, like a blanket over your head and see if you kind of get the same feeling. You know what I mean? No. Nah. Because I've, I've gotten all, all the way under blankets here at night a couple of times because I was freezing. <laughs> and that's fine. It's something something to do with that mask. Nah, that's and our, weird. And our idiot governor said he doesn't care what the CD sa CDC says. We're going to continue to wear masks in New Jersey. Did he say that for real? Oh, yeah. He's a piece of work. Like, you, well, you, you couldn't have uh, more than, like, you know, 50 people in an event until his daughter got married. And then he upped that number to coincide with the number of wedding guests. Sure. And when his son's prom came around, it got upped again because his prom had 500 people. Sure. So I, I'm going to be one of those guys when, you know, I'm going to just take the mask off after I get my vaccination and say, I don't care what the governor says. I think the CDC outranks. Him. True enough. So. Um, I was on the call last week and I know that you were having some. Uh, some concerns about you taking care of your wife or your wife taking care of you. Yeah. It's... So 
over this past week, do you think that you've done some progress on allowing her to be a little bit more in control or do you feel like you're still resistant? It's, it's not even, it's not even like a control issue. Uh, but I have kind of conceded that, um, I, I may need a little more help than I've been willing to graciously accept. <laughs> Let's put it that way. But and, that uh, is a control issue because we, we as men feel like we have to be strong, which is the same thing. We're in control. You know what I mean? And just to accept that we need help sometimes is to submit some of that control. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't always translate into that, into that six letter word of control. Is that six letters? No, seven letters. Yeah. yeah seven. I kind of, I, I kind of <laughs> realized I lost that battle. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, and it's just, it's just the way it's going to be, at least for a while. So I, I a hundred percent agree. Um, and I, so I now, think that now I just say thank you and I'm glad you're you, here. And <laughs> that's, that's awesome because, um, I, I went through a divorce and remarried <laughs> and, um, after the divorce and remarried, I didn't have to, you know, go through the, like the health issues that, that you're having now, but just through the marriage side of it, I had to learn that control aspect a little bit too, of, you know, I wasn't used to giving the ex the freedom and the allowance and the, the whatever, which obviously led to the divorce, you know? So, I mean, it was kind of obvious that it led from one thing to the next, but with my new wife, who I really like to be honest with you like she's there's times to where she's right a hundred percent and i do need to let, relinquish the control but i'm so hesitant because i'm so used to the past you know so i have to be so much more i guess mindful of mm -hmm. my learned habits versus my my well or good habits sort of what's going to be the best for me you know well, so they, they fight each other constantly and it all comes down to that same, I said six, seven letter word control, right? Of what, how much control do I have to have or do I have to hang on to versus what can I let go of and allow sort of that teamwork aspect to really kick in, you know? Well, and I think that, I think that what I felt from you last week was kind of the same aspect to where you felt like I'm supposed to be the strong one. And, and overall, and your, your wife was trying to help out, but you, you were trying to be like the, 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 the super leader, but you kind of had to let go of a little bit more control to be more level. So that oh, she could I had a, I had to let go of a lot more. <laughs> there you go. See, like I had to let go of a lot more. And, and a lot of times it's not even that I can't do something on my own. It's just right. that it, it takes me an hour to do it. And if, you know, if I let her help me, it takes 10 minutes. And, there you go. Uh, See, letting her take some of that control. That's what I'm talking about. You know, and uh, like, you know, we like we today I drove for the first time since everything happened because they. Now I went through all my paperwork, nowhere in my paperwork did, did, did it say I couldn't drive, but they said, you should have a doctor tell you it's okay before you drive. <clears throat> so I've been to my primary, to the cardiologist, back to the prime, and they, they all bounce it around to the other one. Well, there's no reason you can't drive, but, but talk to the cardiologist. And I go to him and it's like, yeah, I don't see any reason you can't drive, but you know, maybe you should check back with your primary or, you know, uh, you know, see the uh, neurologist. Uh, we went to another doctor and he's like looking through my stuff. He goes, there's no reason you can't drive. But none of them will say, go ahead and drive. Right. So I told yeah. her today, I said, it's a risk I, for them. I said, uh, I got I got doctor's appointments on Monday. 
And it's going to be a problem because, you know, you're working all day Monday and one of them is at eight 30 in the morning, which means I'm going to have to leave the house about quarter to eight. And, uh, I said, no, I said, it's really ridiculous. Everybody says there's no reason I can't drive, but nobody will say, go ahead and drive. And, uh, she says, well, what do you want to do? I said, you're going to shop right after work, come home and get me. And I will drive you to shop, right? And you could see what I'm doing. And if you think it's it's safe for me to drive. And uh, so we drove, I, or I drove. And uh, she didn't holler at me any worse than she did before all this happened. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, you can drive. You can. Uh, now I'm not going to go out and go gallivanting all over creation all the time. Cause oh, sure. you know, I'm yeah. still, uh, I still get real fatigued and sure, but you know, it's, you know what I can, I can get to my doctor's appointments on my own and, there you, uh, go, brother. There you, you know, go. and for now that's enough. Yeah. But yeah, consciously let her do some stuff you know what i mean like let her be the teammate so to speak i had to learn that in a marriage way and you i think you need to learn it in more of a health kind of way you know but we're kind of on the same we're kind of on the same track for different reasons well i know like there's some things i just can't do my like i have to wrap my legs there you and, go and uh I just can't do it myself. And uh, I said something about, you know, Corbett's going to be driving down to Alaska with that mobile base. And she's like, and who's going to wrap your legs for you if they're not all healed up by then? (laughs) I don't know. Figure something out. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, once you get it in your mind that you got to start, letting go a little bit it's it, it does get easier i think uh yeah yeah, now, yeah. <laughs> when i i did the job in philly the other day uh james said i'll drive you and uh so you know he picked me up i said yeah just take my my car everything's loaded and we drove down to philly and he helped me you know move the cameras around and uh it was uh it, it worked out really well uh I was really happy with it. And uh, I said, all right, well, that isn't too bad. It's not, you know, it's like you do a wedding, you, you, you pay somebody to be an assistant. This is really no different. <laughs> so I said, all right, if I got a job where it's going to be a little, you know, more than I think I could handle, I'll just, you know, bring somebody with me. That's all. It's not, not yep. that big a deal. There you half, go. The, half the time my grandson goes with me anyway. There you go. And that dude's becoming a movie star. He is something. I, I had to print pictures for him to mail out to fans so he, so he could autograph him and mail them out to some of his fans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, whatever, kid. <laughs> You're going to be known as the roadie here shortly. I, I've already been called that a couple times at, at different things that's okay though you know it's like you know you want you want to see him succeed i told my wife when i when i go and i got a look and i said i'm not planning on like going this week i said calm down i said but when i go i says he gets my cameras and he gets my computer and uh, she looked at me. I said, if I give it to Josh, it'll be on eBay before, you know, the body's cold. Right. Isaiah will use it. You know, he'll, he'll, be, he'll be making videos with the camera and, you know, and he'll use the computer. So I, I said, he gets that stuff. But uh, I do. But I, I, I told him, I said, you are literally my little battle buddy. Because when when she was like, I can't leave you alone in the house, he would come Perfect. over and babysit me. 
and under the guise of, I just want to hang out with, you know, grandpa. And uh, so he would come over and, and uh, hang with me. He's got my first podcast. He's still not, not done editing it. I said, when are you going to get it done? Cause I said, I want to get it up. And he's like, I'm working on it. You know, I want it to be really good. Said, okay. He, he's the one that does the video and editing and stuff. So we'll let him, let him do his thing and hopefully it'll, it'll be good. Uh, right now. 14 minutes. 14 minutes. 14, yeah. It's like yeah. 11 o'clock here. Oh, to wrap them. Yeah, sorry. We're we're timing out when to wrap the the ribs. What time is it there? Eleven o'clock. It's yeah. eleven o'clock there. Jeez. Yeah. It's yeah. Like seven seven o'clock here on the uh, on the on the Russian on the Russian border. You know, out here. So, on the, <laughs> just, you want me to turn over uh, host to you so you can stay on a while longer, or? No, no, we'll go ahead and kick off. But uh, it was good, good talking to you, Ronnie. I appreciate you, uh, you taking the time to kind of just really spill it out. You know, because I, I feel like I feel like you show up here a lot. You know, you don't really get a whole lot of time to talk. So I, I really loved hearing a lot of what you said. So. Oh, um, thank you. Yeah, especially Bruno. when it's good. Yeah, <laughs> and it was good tonight, Bruno. Man, I feel you lately. I want you to stay in contact. I really do. Um, I feel like you have a lot of things on your plate, you know, and I mean that like in a way of just a lot I of things am, spinning. Uh... I I am seriously thinking about asking if uh, one of them, you know, even if it's the uh, neurologist, to uh, maybe set me up with a therapist for a couple sessions. Yeah. And uh, just get it out. But yeah. I did learn my wife is a very good listener, and uh, you know that first night when I broke down. Now she laughs at me if I start crying still, but. And she tells me it's cute, but uh, other than that, you know, she's uh, she's pretty good at listening, and uh, so I'm learning to talk to her a little bit more too. That's good. That's good shit. So, but yeah. So, man, good talking to you guys tonight. I feel like I had a great conversation. I appreciate you guys listening to me too because I think I really needed it. I think that um, this past month has been super hard and these past couple of days have just been an amazing, like kind of refresh button, you know? And so in being able to kind of plug in and being able to kind of spill that out to you guys, is, it's just super awesome. So I appreciate you guys listening to me too. I, I almost get more out of listening to everybody else than I do talking. Sometimes I feel like, yeah, but uh... same here. I'm kind of the same way. I like listening to you guys. I get that chance to talk. I get that chance. Other than that, I actually enjoy listening to you guys. And it puts things in perspective in my mind at the same time. For sure. For sure. Yeah. All right, gentlemen, I will uh, 